thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good. We would ask for your mercy to live out your scriptures. Uh, transform us by your mercy and grace. And we give you thanks, and we give you thanks, and we give you thanks. In Christ's name, amen. 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 So, <clears throat> um, we are together again, just praising the Lord. There you go. Something good is about to happen. Something good is in store. We're together again, just praising the again, Lord. Just praising the Lord. Something good is about to happen. Something good is in store. There you go. Okay. okay. So we're in... Um, Matthew in, 7. Matthew 7. Let me see if I can't make this part of it go away. Uh, mm -hmm. What is this part over here, and how do I make it go away? I don't see anything here. Um, all I see is you and a thumbnail and a scripture and a, a slightly bigger bigger window. Okay. I shouldn't say slightly bigger, but it's about, it takes up about half the screen rather than the whole screen. Okay. Well, but listen. certainly readable. Okay, good. So, uh, <laughs> so what it does on my screen, Rich, is it's showing me uh, all the comments that I normally see uh, over here. Uh -huh. um, so I'm essentially watching Facebook through Zoom on the screen here. Th there is a problem with that, though, because I can't move the scriptures around. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we're in... Um, we're in Matthew 7, which is a continuation of the Sermon on the Mount in one sense. In another sense, it's a, it, it's a different um, viewing of the development of Matthew 7. Uh, it's a quoted and misquoted verse a lot. So let's see what we can do with it. Don't judge and criticize and condemn others. Hey, Hello. Matt's in the house. Hi. Hey, Matt. Hi. Oh, it works. Everything's working. I don't know. Let's not speak too quick about that, but so far, so good. Okay. So uh, it's a misquoted verse <laughs> sometimes and um, not quoted nearly enough another area of time. Don't judge and criticize and condemn others unfairly with an attitude of self-righteous superiority as though assuming the office of the judge so that you will not be judged unfairly. Oh, mm -hmm. Somebody should pan right. You're losing Matthew off the screen. Sorry, shouldn't interrupt. And tilt down a little bit if you can. Didn't mean to interrupt your reading, but I surely did. Um, yeah, do not judge and criticize, condemn. Others oh, unfairly, yeah, the word unfairly. Well, you, I, I get real, real uh, antsy about that word unfairly because what's fair to one person is <laughs> not fair to another. I see. See, most people use the word unfairly as like I'm not getting my way. Period. Yeah, right. And it's not a matter of equitable equability, equitability or anything of that nature. It's just it's not happening for me, so it's not happening. I mean, it's just not a good thing. That's right. So, but, but I think I think it really does make sense that we look at ourselves when something that somebody is doing affects us. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, infects us out of um, out of proportion to the sentence or to whatever, hmm. then then we need to look at. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Lynn. Uh, good morning. Um, oh, nice. So don't judge and criticize and condemn others unfairly with an attitude of self righteous superiority, as though assuming the role of the judge, so that you will not be judged unfairly. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we. Good morning, Kath. Yay. Hi, Kath. Um. So we get to the place of saying, okay, cannot I say that this is good and this is evil? And the answer is, of course, you need to know what is good and what is evil. Right. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to be guilty of blasting away at somebody for whom you have the same kind of life issues. Like, so easy <laughs> to true. attack somebody when you don't have, you know... Um, the, the guy that's losing the argument throws the first punch, and you just think that's not how this works. Yeah. So what right. is the balance here? What do we need to be cautious of in verse 1? Well, I think what you end up, I've heard it described as you end up like uh, in an encounter with the Sphinx. 
yeah. and it poses a question and then answer it, it unravels you. Yeah. So you're putting yourself in a situation where you're trying to unravel somebody and then put a stamp on <laughs> and the same thing is going to happen to you because the same attention is going to be put on you. There you go. So you would kind of like, you know, you don't, they don't spend a lot of time with their kids. You say, listen, like, I don't spend a lot of time with my kids and I notice, you know, that our relationship kind of gets a little distant and they act up. And I'm just saying, yeah. you know, like... No, you don't spend a lot of time with your kids, you worthless guy. He's a crap. <laughs> yeah. And then, then you look at that kind of a thing. I think that's the difference. That's right. It's, a, it's just a, you're, you're setting yourself up for a target. That's right. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a, certainly a trend afoot these days to um, develop a, uh, a self-centered morality to which you uh, assume uh, you uh, try to get other people to aspire to, to it yourself. Yeah. Uh, and that morality is based on, I mean, it's just some things that uh, perhaps you learned made sense to you. It goes back to postmodernism. Um, I have my truth, you have your truth. You um, and uh, living in my truth, I'm, I, I've come to realize uh, that um, what you're doing is wrong. Uh, but, you know, that's obviously not, certainly not from a position of uh ob objective standards or absolute knowledge that's not even that's not even considered i mean that's mm -hmm. you know but so again it's yeah you just confess your own beliefs yeah. and where yeah. your beliefs come from and you're right. like they don't come from god so they come from being a good person and whatever. right right there you go yeah and kathy says brothers and sisters if someone is caught in a sin you who live by the spirit should restore that person gently but watch yourselves or you'll be tempted also in the same way. Thank right, you. right, thank you. So, so one of the things that's also fascinating about this is it's a judgment. Yeah. So though all of them's people who condemn other people are gonna have <laughs> the judgment, like the, the, the final judgment is a playback of all of the things that you said <laughs> you should do and all the things that you didn't do that you said you should do. Like you'll be judged not only by the law or whatever, but by what you said was a judgment and didn't live up to. So hypocrisy, um, the, the playback. The <laughs> I think you're in the verse two there. Verse two, okay. Isn't it? Yep, go ahead. For yeah, just, just, what, just what you're saying. Uh, for just as you hypocritically judge others when you are sinful and unrepentant, so you will be judged in accordance with the standard of measure used to pass out judgment. Judgment will be measured to you. It's right. better just, I feel that if I, you know, even in your, with God's will and you're trying to do what he wants, you, you end up in situations where you're lazy and stuff, where you do a little <laughs> sinful thing. And then you try to cover it over, and it seems like you end, you're stuck with hypocrisy. There you go. Like, if I'm too tired to read the Bible, and I'm not going to get anything out of it, yet I feel I should because I haven't for a couple of days, it's like, no, you're just, you know, you're, you're frittering away your time on other things, and you're not investing it in the right way, and that's a sin. So there you go. Don't try to cover it up. Yeah. And so you get trapped in hypocrisy, and I think that's, it's a very subtle trap that. That's right. You, you have to be completely without judgment. In order okay, nobody's there. <laughs> Nobody is there. <laughs> okay, so so, you're gonna... so we are we are we are to say what is right and wrong, but we are also to look at at how our heart is in that. Like so often, the overreaction to something means, you know, why. Why are you reacting so strongly to something that's, and the answer is because there's something that that stirs up in you. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then obviously there's people today who major in saying what is right is wrong and what is wrong is right. And we're not right. to say, oh, that's okay. But yeah. we are to look inside ourselves. Why does that, what is truth? Jesus is truth. What is what is what are we supposed to do with that? And mm -hmm. then, so our um, 
our, our judgments are a lot less harsh if we take the second to do the Holy Spirit reveal to me why this is so strong, why my reaction, mm -hmm. why my overreaction is yeah. so strong. Yeah, you know, in, in like, psychology, you'd have a, a projection. Yeah. Whereas there, something in yourself is being removed and yeah. put out into the world. Yeah. And uh, asking the Holy Spirit to show you that will show you That's right. that process. Rather than just jumping all over somebody because they said or did this thing. Well, you're not actually, you can't actually see things in the world that are of yourself. Yeah. That aren't other people. That's right. And, uh, yeah. That's kind of frightening that you can do that. That's that's how your brain really works in the first place. And it's either it's true or it's not true. That's right. Yeah. And as the Holy Spirit radiates through our lives, yeah. and as we worship and study the scripture and fellowship together, we get a we get a a Holy Spirit sense that this is good and this isn't a, a gift of discernment there. Well, the Holy Spirit is totally separate from you. It's God's that's right. spirit. It's that's very right. helpful. <laughs> very, very helpful. I mean, David, he called it the great elf or the comforter. Yeah, right? and he is, and he yeah. is. <laughs> it's very but, comforting. <laughs> but sometimes we choose to listen to our own advice rather than the spirit, or sometimes we choose to tell the spirit how to do this or that thing. <laughs> right. He's God, and we are not. It's like mm -hmm. a consumer feedback. <laughs> 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 what are your thoughts on the Holy Spirit? <laughs> well, it could be a little more lenient. <laughs> right. Your opinion is valuable to us. Huh? Yeah. No. Why do you look at the insignificant speck that's in your brother's eye, but do not notice and acknowledge the egregious, egregious? egregious log that is in your own eye? Okay. Right. Well, what an amazing sentence! Or how can you, how can you say to your brother, "Let me get that speck out of your eye"? When there's a log in your own eye, you hypocrite, play actor, pretender, first get the log out of your own eye, and then you'll be able to see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Mm -hmm. So, so what is the balance here? Yeah, well, he's uh, he's 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 acknowledging there's there's a speck in a beam. Yes, but deal with them in the right priority. Get uh, get uh, your beam out so that you can deal with your brother properly. Um, that I mean, that's I think that's the uh, order of things that he's suggesting here. That's right, mm -hmm. and it's not that your brother might be doing something wrong. He might be right. Well, but, yeah, he's there's a speck there. There's definitely a speck there, and there's a log in your own eye. So right. deal with the log first, and then. And you will be, you should be in a better position to to uh, care for your brother because you will have dealt with an, uh, and thereby developed an experience with dealing with things stuck in your eye, so to speak. Uh, and uh, that that should make you a better uh, counselor when uh, uh, when uh, you've dealt with your own situation. That's right. But you see that with um, now that they they give gender reassignment surgery so freely and it's an industry and that is you go to the doctor and you present a problem whereas they're saying that um you know i'm a young person and i don't feel comfortable in my identity and and they have a log you have a little speck right? you feel uncomfortable they have a log and they say oh what we're going to do is surgically alter you into something ah. and that's the beam because what you should do is go home <laughs> and, and wait yeah. You know, and, and wait a couple of years. I mean, everybody, your body's changing. Like, it's, right. it's, exactly. So the, the, the beam allows them to like, just remove that objective reality and do horrible things. Well, that's Unbelievable. Right. Yeah. And it just coming up with it, it's literally an excuse to come up with mutilating a child. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's, it's a very, it, it popped in my mind. It's, but that's, that's a very extreme version of it. They are. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So we have. <laughs> We have the challenge of the scriptures here to be non-hypocritical, and then you can deal with somebody else's um, uh, spec. In a non-judgmental way. Yeah. yeah. You know, and really, your f first reaction in, in anger or frustration or whatever isn't nearly as helpful as your second reaction after you breathe in the Holy Spirit. So, sure. 
So yes, and really, just because you're at some place in your Christian life and the guy next to you might not be, does not necessarily mean that you need to go correct him because the spirit is the corrector. But when the time is right to have that conversation, like, um, you know, I've noticed that this or that. And so, and from your own reflection on it, like Matt just shared a minute ago, you have, you're much more capable of speaking life into somebody right. when you have looked at it through the eyes of, you know, a penitent sinner here. And you can, yeah, in situations like that too, you may have the opportunity to say, you know what, I had a situation like that. Yeah. And reflect on what, what, you, uh, uh, what you went through and then use that as a starting point. At least that, it, that's an admission that, um, you know, I'm speaking from experience here, not as a, a, a judge of uh, trying to lord over you in some way. It's, it's, uh, and, it's, and with somebody really spiritual, um, you know, I, I've noticed this. What would you, what would you say about that? Or how would you counsel somebody who had this situation? And then it comes out of their mouth, um, what needs to be done. Sure, and yeah. if it comes out of their mouth, they believe themselves more than they believe me. So, there it's, you go. There's a yep. whole, but that takes that's a really advanced um, study, so that you can be, and way past this whole massive log in your own eye. You know. Mm -hmm. So, so how does agape work? Agape works because Christ loves us even with our specks and our logs and our everything, and that we can walk as he would have us to walk and that we can see clearly as we breathe through the spirit. Um, uh, but our first reaction is often just to flash out at somebody and um, not even look at how, how, how affected and affected we are by this particular situation. So take a breath, mm -hmm. hear what the Holy Spirit says, get forgiveness for yourself and then and then you'll know how to speak to the to the other person. Yeah, that's it. You're you're you have like a a, a psychol like a psyche, and then it's like, and you have your body, and then the Holy Spirit is like it slots in. <laughs> and yeah, you see the speed that happens. Like it's your I think for your own safety, like if a tiger's there, like the Holy Spirit doesn't control you. It controls your voice when you speak in tongues, but that's about it. But it's it's not meant to control you control you right so it is something that yeah you're it's always your you, your hunch your first reaction is always going to come from you yeah so you got to be really careful with it that's why you're like mm, 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 a lot <laughs> when when kathy yeah. was teaching and the and her students were really frustrated she would she would count the fruits of the spirit love joy <laughs> peace and they would scurry to their chairs uh oh she got up to peace look out <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Just putting it out there. This is what's happening in my head. I want to, my breath wants to strike it out. Yeah. Oh, joy. So, uh, so we need to. It's an incredibly serious warning that the Lord actually includes in the Sermon on the Mount. This is how we need to be. That we need to be recognizing that there is a speck in our. Oh, in his eye, but oh yeah, there's a log in mine. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you that the scriptures are so powerful and so convicting. And so, oh Lord, take the log and take the log and take the log out of my own eye and let me see clearly, oh God. Transform me, oh Lord, so I can make a difference in a desperate and dying world. In Christ's name, amen. Yes. Yes, thanks again, Lord, for the instruction you've provided us here, and that uh, we pray for your uh, your Holy Spirit and and uh, your direction to shape our lives that we live them that in a way that brings glory to you in Yeshua's name. Amen, uh, dear Lord. I pray that I place all judgment in your hands. Yes, as you are the judge of all mankind. Yeah, and I pray that others see that as well. But that even my worth itself, 
will be informed by your judgment of me and not by my own. In yeah. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And let me finish the Kathy Boyle sentence. Um, when she got up to self-control, we are so doomed. <laughs> 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 Blessings to you all. Yes. Amen. Bye -bye. See you. <laughs>